God is no respecter of persons, nor of human opinions. I will read from the Bible, Psalms. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. 1 Samuel. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. 2 Corinthians. Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trust to himself that he is Christ's, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ's, even so are we Christ's. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. For not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. Acts. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people, and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming in to him, and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid, and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men, and he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. 
1 Corinthians. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. 1 John. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin, because he is born of God. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, as he gave us commandment. The correlative reading is from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures and from Prose Works, both by Mary Baker Eddy. Science makes no concessions to persons or opinions. One must abide in the morale of truth, or he cannot demonstrate the divine principle. Controlled by the divine intelligence, man is harmonious and eternal. The secret of Christian science in right thinking and acting is open to mankind, but few comparatively see it, or seeing it shut their eyes and wait for a more convenient season, or as of old cry out, why art thou come hither to torment me before the time? Strong desires bias human judgment and misguide action, else they uplift them. But the reformer continues his lightning, thunder, and sunshine till the mental atmosphere is clear. The reformer must be a hero at all points, and he must have conquered himself before he can conquer others. Sincerity is more successful than genius or talent. Certain elements in human nature would undermine the civic, social, and religious rights and laws of nations and peoples, striking at liberty, human rights, and self-government. And this, too, in the name of God, justice, and humanity? These elements assail even the new old doctrines of the prophets and of Jesus and his disciples. History shows that error repeats itself until it is exterminated. Surely the wisdom of our forefathers is not added but subtracted from whatever sways the scepter of self and pelf over individuals, weak provinces, or peoples. Here, our hope anchors in God, who reigns, 
and justice and judgment are the habitation of his throne forever. Mistaken views ought to be dissolving views, since whatever is false should disappear. To suppose that human love, guided by the divine principle, which is love, is partial, unmerciful, or unjust, indicates misapprehension of the divine principle and its workings in the human heart. When will the world cease to judge of causes from a personal sense of things, conjectural and misapprehensive? When thought dwells in God, and it should not to our consciousness dwell elsewhere, one must benefit those who hold a place in one's memory, whether it be friend or foe, and each share the benefit of that radiation. This individual blessedness and blessing comes not so much from individual as from universal love. It emits light because it reflects. And all who are receptive share this equally. Mistaken or transient views are human. They are not governed by the principle of divine science. But the notion that a mind governed by principle can be forced into personal channels, affinities, self-interests, or obligations is a grave mistake. It dims the true sense of God's reflection and darkens the understanding that demonstrates above personal motives, unworthy aims, and ambitions. I desire the equal growth and prosperity of all Christian scientists and the world in general. Each and every one has equal opportunity to be benefited by my thoughts and writings. If any are not partakers thereof, this is not my fault and is far from my desire. I would part with a blessing myself to bestow it upon others, but could not deprive them of it. False views, however engendered relative to the true and unswerving course of a Christian scientist, will at length dissolve into thin air, the dew of heaven will fall gently on the hearts and lives of all who are found worthy to suffer for righteousness and have taught the truth, which is energizing, refreshing, and consecrating mankind. To station justice and gratitude as sentinels along the lines of thought would aid the solution of this problem and counteract the influence of envious minds or the misguided individual who keeps not watch over his emotions and conclusions. You must feel and know that God alone governs man, that his government is harmonious, that he is too pure to behold iniquity and divides his power with nothing evil or material, that material laws are only human beliefs which govern mortals wrongfully. These beliefs arise from the subjective states of thought producing the beliefs of a mortal material universe so-called, and of material disease and mortality. 
you must learn to acknowledge God in all his ways. It is only a lack of understanding of the allness of God which leads you to believe in the existence of matter or that matter can frame its own conditions contrary to the law of spirit. The ways of Christianity have not changed. Meekness, selflessness, and love are the paths of his testimony and the footsteps of his flock.